It's Shopo Monday, March 7th, 2022. Uh, we are now uh, back uh, from the first leg of our tour, but we are about to, we're going to hit Texas and Louisiana uh, starting next week. But, um, uh, gentlemen, how's your, uh, how's your recovery going? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. It really does seem the war fever in this country is, is getting back to like 2002, 2003 levels. You know, I mean, like, like, with the, like the media and just, just, just the general attitude um, of anyone who expresses any skepticism uh, towards escalating this conflict or, um, I don't know, uh, rendering a historical explanation about, like, uh, how, why and how it's happening right now is... Or um, not validating, like, with absolute childlike credulity literally anything that comes out of, like, the Ukrainian side of the war. It's yeah, wild. My, uh, my, favorite, my favorite feature of um, all-American war fever all uh, American media coverage of any war we have anything to do with is um, when people go, well, you know, America, America's done bad things, but we're not, uh, you know, we're not responsible for every bad thing that happens. When you hear someone say that, they mean nothing. They mean don't bring up anything America has ever done at all, especially yeah, because- not in relation to this specific conflict. Well, I mean, let's just jump into it because I got I got two reading series today that that render that that critique that Felix was uh, just describing that renders it in vivid clarity. And you know, like the the people who are saying this, like, oh, you know, there are worse things out there than America, are the people who did all the horrible things that that are that 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 are being used now as to to, to muster some sort of I don't know skepticism for like the American uh, you know State Department or uh, you know politicians who. Uh, you know, or just the, anyone who, uh, like I said, expresses any kind of skepticism is now being accused of being in the pocket of Vladimir Putin or being pro-Russian or something like that. And I mean, it just feels all exactly like the way it did in the war on terror. And the war on terror's biggest boosters are back to remind you that the war on terror never happened. And it's like it's 1998 again. Yeah. No, all this shit is the only way it can leave your lips without you fucking crumbling to a pile of dust like in Last Crusade is if you decontextualize it to, to a point where it's beyond meaning, where you make it so America is just, it's just a normal country. It's just any other country that there isn't some special onus or responsibility or weight to your actions when you, you have been the world's only superpower for 20, 30 years. Well, let's go, let's go on the first one here. Uh, this comes courtesy of the Atlantic surprise, surprise. Uh, this is by, uh, the Atlantic uh, Council Hamid. magazine. Yeah, yeah. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization magazine. <laughs> Shadi Hamid, uh, who's of the Brookings Institute. So, oh, boy, I mean, another like, Yeah. I mean, bastard. once again, Richard, Richard Nixon, he was a lot of talk, no follow-up. That's all I'll <laughs> say about the Brookings Institute. But, yeah, okay. So his article in The Atlantic is titled, There Are Many Things Worse Than American Power. Blaming U.S. hegemony for global problems has been easy, but Putin's invasion of Ukraine offers a preview of a much more dangerous world. Um, So he begins by saying, if there was any doubt before, the answer is now clear. Vladimir Putin is showing that a world without American power, or for that matter, Western power, is not a better world. For the generation of Americans who came of age in the shadow of the September 11th attacks, the world America had made came came with a question mark. Their formative experiences were the ones in which American power had been used for ill in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the Middle East more broadly, and for much longer, the United States has built a security architecture around some of the world's most repressive regimes. For those on the left, this was nothing new, and it was all too obvious. I spent my college years reading Noam Chomsky and other leftist critics of U.S. foreign policy. Good for enti- you! <laughs> and they weren't entirely wrong. On balance, I, I, I read <laughs> Noam Chomsky in college. That's the new I have experimented. <laughs> I did. I read no. I read Noam Chomsky, but I did not inhale any of his, yeah. any of his lessons. <laughs> I, I only like his linguistics work. <laughs> I've, I've seen. I've seen that in the bio. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've seen that too. I yeah. read Chomsky for the linguistics. Mm. <laughs> On balance, the U.S. may have been a force for good, but in particular regions at particular times, it had been anything but. So brave of Shadi to uh, admit this at the beginning of his essay. Because, I mean, he, he's saying, like, oh, in, in just very discreet times and places, America has not been a force for good in the world. And by the way, uh, the Brookings Institute supported uh, all of these instances wholeheartedly. And including Shadi, if you go back long enough in, in his CV, uh, I couldn't find anything on Iraq, but he was a huge booster of the war in Libya. 
and a regime change for Gaddafi. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you, you would think that, like, Shadi, like, that's, that's one discrete example in the world in recent memory that you supported in which U.S. power was used to make the, make the situation vastly worse than it was before. So, congratulations for reading Chomsky. Um, it hasn't helped you in any way. Well, this, um, is, so- this is part and parcel with the, uh, well, you know, I know America's done bad things. All those bad things were, you know, about 10 years ago. If, we're, if, it, yeah. if, if it's a real bleeding heart like shoddy, it was 10 years ago. But they, they don't count because we've, I guess it, we've instantly lost superpower status. I don't know. Depending uh, either due to wokeness or, you know, polarization or whatever you want to say. Well, I mean, I, it's also like this. I, I, think, I think for people like Shadi, it's sort of like, yes, in certain discrete times and places, like Iraq and Afghanistan and the Middle East over the last <laughs> 20 or 30 years, yeah, America has been anything but a force for good. But I really think for these guys, it's sort of like, okay, yeah, we screwed up, but our intentions were so good. Whereas, you know, Vladimir Putin, he has evil intentions. He just wants to conquer a country and take it over and destroy its people. Whereas America, yes, we conquer countries and destroy people, but, we're, but we did it to help them, and it was just like our... It was our for their own good. It was for their own good, and, like, and they screwed it up. You know, like, like they were the ones who chose violence over, over peace and security that we were offering. And, you know, America, we, just, we were just so naive in our good intentions. We thought the world would embrace all the good things that we were offering them at the point of a gun. Well, they, okay, so they're, do, they're doing... Um, Oh, well, this is what a big, ugly, sad, scary, multipolar world looks like. But the bad actors in the multipolar world are directly traceable to things we did when it exactly. was monopolar yes, world. Yes, so what the yes. fuck are you talking about? We put fucking Putin in power in the first place! Well, okay. He goes on. He writes, Blaming America first became all too easy. Yeah, you're goddamn right. You're goddamn right it's easy because you're, we're, we're the ones at fucking fault. And also, I'm a citizen of the United States of America, so goddamn right I'm going to blame America first because this is the country that I'm at least in theory responsible for as a citizen of a democracy. And you know what? A lot of these, a lot of these liberal hawks are getting real nasty in their, fucking, uh, in, in their portrayal of the Russian people. And like Russia as a country, like they're just like it, it's a country of orcs, and you know, like like they need to be made to feel pain because they're not all turning out in the streets to fucking protest this war. And it should be noted, many many Russians are, many Russians are opposed to this war, and many are risking a lot more than people do in this country to fucking protest it. Um, but like, but yeah, like they need to be collectively punished because they haven't done it. Like a they haven't risen up on mass to overthrow their brutal brutal dictator that rules their country. So, I mean, that is the Osama bin Laden rationale for why it's okay to kill American civilians during the war on terror or, or to do 9-11. It's because, you know, in a democracy, like, you know, people, people choose their government and like the citizens of a country are responsible for the actions of those governments. So at least you, so like if you, if you believe that about Russia, you'd have to, you'd have to admit to yourself that America is no more, as either no more or less a democracy than Russia is, or that like you know that 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 America like we bear the sins of our own country and like and, and even our civilians can be held responsible for it, because you know if we're a democracy that's got to be the case and you can't hold two standards for for Russia and America if 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 you're taking this point of view again to exon to condemn the people of Russia because they're not they're not you know uh, haven't done a revolution yet to overthrow Putin but we haven't done a revolution to overthrow our government either so it's like either no one's responsible or everyone is. Well, yeah, no, I've seen, I've noticed that a lot in the uh, Russia ologist, the Russia specialist field. Who, oh my God, I bet it was a sad two years after Russia Gate, but they're they're back in business more than ever. The main role of the Russia expert now seems to be convincing, uh, like normal, good-hearted people that Russians support every single thing that Putin does, and even if they're not explicitly supporting them, they are by not protesting. So you can do whatever you want to them. And, you know, you can point to the kind of the rise of kind of a uh, uh, like a, a terrifying and, and violent nationalism in Russia that's certainly being stoked now by this invasion. But like, take a look in the fucking mirror. I know I know I would never want to blame America first here, but let's get our own house in order before we start fucking, uh, you know, uh, condemning entire countries full of people for not having the right politics. 
So he goes on here. He says, after September 11th, U.S. power was, an over, was as overwhelming as it was uncontested. That it was squandered on two endless wars made it convenient to focus on America's sins while underplaying Russia and China's growing ambition. For his part, Putin understood well that the balance of power was shifting. Knowing what he knew, the Russian president wasn't necessarily irrational in deciding to invade Ukraine. He had good reason to think that he could get away with it. After all, he had gotten away with quite a lot for nearly 15 years, ever since the Russian war against Georgia in 2008, when George W. Bush was still president. Then he annexed Crimea in 2014 and intervened brutally in Syria in 2015. Each time, in an understandable desire to avoid an escalatory spiral with Russia, the United States held back and tried not to do anything that might provoke Putin. Meanwhile, Europe became more and more dependent on Russian energy. Germany, for example, was importing 55% of its natural gas from Russia. Just three weeks ago, it was possible for Der Spiegel to declare that most Germans thought peace with Russia is the only thing that matters. The narrative of a feckless and divided West solidified for years. We as Americans were feeling unsure of ourselves, so it was only reasonable that Putin would feel it too. In such a context, and after four years of Donald Trump and the domestic turmoil that he wrought, it was tempting to valorize restraint and limited